In today's lecture, we are going to talk about basics of mass spectrometry, which could be used for characterizing, identifying the proteins of interest after performing the immunoprecipitation based experiment. So, in the last lecture, if you recall, we talked about if you want to identify the potential interactants of a protein of interest, you can do immunoprecipitation experiment and then identify the potential interactants using mass spectrometry. So, today we are going to have an application scientist who is going to talk to you about how to perform these experiments using mass spectrometers and then identify the possible proteins of interest using a software. So, let us have this lecture. Uh, hi, good morning everyone. Uh, so, I am Pratip from Thermo Fisher Scientific. I am the application specialist for mass spectrometry for proteomics and biopharma. So, today till now you have uh, have done the IP experiments. So, immunoprecipitation you do the uh, antibody precipitation. So, next from those proteins which have been precipitated, so how you identify the protein. Mainly we will focus on the mass spectrometry uh, part. So, my topic is mass spectrometry analysis from IP experiment to protein identification. So, already you have done the this experiment. So, you have uh, precipitated the protein and you have the protein. So, what is the next step? Next step uh, either you start with this protein, you can run a SDS page or in a solution you can digest the protein with some protease which uh, uh, for example, trypsin which cards after arginine and lysine. Then it makes a peptides mixture. So, those peptide mixture is fractionated through LC and uh, introduced to the uh, mass spectrometry where you get the masses of those peptides. And now you search against some database using some search tools, you identify those peptides. Okay. So, today uh, we will discuss mostly on the mass spectrometry part, how you can analyze the data, how you can introduce the peptides into the mass and how can you analyze the data. Okay, so, before going to that, for I am just giving you brief on the sample preparation. So, you have the IP proteins, proteins you have either you can run a SDS page, normal SDS page or you can make a solution in, sol in solution digestion. So, in both cases you uh, uh, in case of in gel digestion you run the gel uh, in SDS page, then you cut the band of interest of your protein, in protein of interest and cut the band, then you digest that band extra uh, so when you keep with the trypsin so protein get digested to peptides so when it will be in a peptide form it will come out from the gel bands and you extract those peptides and then further you proceed so in in case of in solution digestion already the protein in the solution so you you have to do the uh, reduction and alkylation it is very important part otherwise what will happen there are disulfide linkage due to this disulfide linkage protein will not be open up all the parts are is not open up. So, you have to go through this reduction and alkylation DDT we are using G is very common for reduction it reduce the disulfide bond and because of uh, reversible reaction you have to use some alkylation part. So, block that uh, sulfide residues. So, you put iodoacetamide and those sulfide will be uh, blocked by iodoacetamide and then you digest with some proteases. So, most common protease is trypsin which cars after arginine and lysine. So, the masses basically important part is reduction and alkylation is very important otherwise you will not get 100 percent digestion. Next trypsin works in the basic pH. So, when you do the uh, digestion procedure that that has to be in the basic pH more than 8 pH okay. and it has to be kept at 30 degree. So, these are the two criteria where trypsin works very well and then trypsin we all know trypsin cards after arginine and lysine. Then after digestion the clean up procedure. So, before injection to the in injected to the mass spectrometry we have to clean up your samples. For in gel digestion it is fine the samples are comes pure, but in solution digestion. So, samples may contain some impurities some salts or some other impurities. So, that will block your uh, MS analysis that is why the clean up procedure is very important. So, sample preparation 
that's why sample preparation is the most crucial part and if you've done a proper sample preparation your 90 percent work is done the next is the basically ms is basically a software driven so whatever you are set in the software it will do but the sample preparation is the most crucial part for yours okay now comes to the mass spectrometry so i'm keeping basics of the mass spectrometry i'm not going in very details on all the parts so what is mass spectrometry? Mass spectrometry basically is a production of ions that is subsequently filtered or separated by M by Z. Okay, so where and we are getting a resulting mass spectrum of abundance of produced ion as a function of M by Z. So any mass spectra, if you look into the mass spectra, so X axis will be the M by Z value, mass by charge ratio and Y axis will be uh, the abundance, either relative abundance or the uh, absolute abundance. Okay, so, so now sometimes uh, if you run any samples in Maldi, okay, so, so Maldi is, Maldi top top is very common. So that time you will, sometimes you are saying hey, your mass is coming. X axis, it comes as a mass, M. So whatever the M by Z value is the M. Because in Maldi you are getting the plus one charge. So always the M by Z value will be equal to your mass. But in case of ESI, Electrospay ionization, so that time you will get multiple charges. That time M by, M by Z value will not be the exact mass. So don't be confused with this terminology. Okay, so now uh, we can simply uh, explain the mass spectrometry in four letters GMSD. So it has first is the generate, so you have to be ionized the molecule. Uh, once any molecule can be ionized it can be detected by mass spec. So that is a simple way to identify it. So it has to be ionized properly. The ionization method may be from solid to gaseous, maybe liquid to gaseous. Then it has to be moved properly. So after ionization till the detector, so that path should be the proper. Otherwise what will happen if any molecule touch in the wall that get discharged and it will not be detected in the mass spec. So that path should be very proper. Then selection, obviously you have to separate the molecule because you have a mixture of uh, masses. So you have to filter which mass you want to identify, you can control that one. And lastly, there is a detector. Okay, so you have to detect the molecule. <clears throat> so let's see what are the uh, components are there in the different sectors. So first, ion source, ionization, where the ionization happens. So there are very different methods of ionization. It comes with the uh, most popular is the ESI and MALDI. You already heard about this. Electrospay ionization, which is liquid to gaseous. So you inject the sam soli sample in the solution format, where from where uh, you put the high voltage, and that high voltage, it will make the ionization. Next is the MALDI, matrix assisted laser desorption ionization. So it is a solid form to gaseous form. What happened in Maldi, you mix the sample with some matrix molecule, spot on a plate, may keep it for dry, and then you shoot laser. That laser gives the energy to ionization. So from solid to gaseous space. These are the two most uh, soft ionization where your biomolecules will not degrade in during the ionization. Whatever the other uh, mode of ionization, fab, electron ionization, chemical ionization, these are very hard ionization. Where already uh, when you put your biomolecule, it will fragment in the source. So you will not get the exact mass of the molecule. So it is applicable only in case of small molecules like chemical compounds. And APCI and APPI, atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, these two are for nonpolar molecules. Okay, exclusively for nonpolar molecules. Now come for the mass analyzer, means where you separate your molecules. Most common, everybody knows a quadruple TOF instrument, time of flight, time of flight, a quadruple means, it, quadruple is not an analyzer, I can say it's a filter. It can precisely filter your molecule, which molecule you want. Ion traps, so you can put your molecules in the, uh, you, you can trap your molecule inside a vessel and you can make, uh, detect that molecule. So quadruple, ion trap, triple quads, these are very low resolution. Means here you cannot separate nearby masses. But on the other case, FTICR, Orbitrap, TOF or QTOF, these are high resolution instruments where uh, you can separate the nearby masses. 
Okay. So uh, in IIT Bombay, we have Orbitrap technology. It's, it's nothing but a, a trapping of electron in a orbital motion. Okay. So we put a high voltage and the ions are rotating around the molecule. Okay. So we'll come to those part. And last is a detector. So you have you require some detector. The better part for Orbitrap is Orbitrap. It's itself acts as an analyzer as well as detector. So you don't require a extra detector for Orbitrap. Okay. Now uh, we see how the mass spec works. What we are doing in the mass spec after injection of sample. So we in we inject a sample to mass spec. Through the mass analyzer and detector, we get the MS1. Okay, MS spectra. We'll get this MS spectra. From this MS spectra, we fragment, we will select one of the peak and again we will do the fragmentation, MS2 and we get this fragmentation. Now this fragmentation we will search against the database and we will find out what are the ions are there, B and Y ions and we get the database match, we will get the peptides. From the peptides we can say this protein is present in your sample. Okay. So now uh, come to the nomenclature of identifying the uh, ions. This is a basically nomenclature how you can assign your peptides. So this is example of a peptide of four amino acid R1, R2, R3, R4. Okay. So now when you applied voltage to fragment the molecule in MS2, so this C alpha C, Cn and NC alpha, these three bond can be broken. So this any any one of the broken. Okay. So if it is C alpha C bond is broken, then the N terminal side will call the A ions, the y, uh, C terminal side will call the X ions. Same way, CN, this is the peptide bond basically, B and Y ions. And if it is uh, NC alpha bond, then it will be called the CZ ions. Okay. So now there are different kind of fragmentation, different way of fragmentation, CID, ACD, ETD. So different, different fragmentation will give you different kind of ions. So in case of CID, you will get only B and Y ions. So in case of uh, ETD, you will get C and Z ions. Okay. Now come to the facility here in IIT Bombay. So it has a tribrid instrument, Orbitrap Fusion, with coupled with Nano LC. So why uh, we require Nano LC? Because we are doing the proteomics. In proteomics, sample is very small amount and it is very precious. So we cannot uh, run the normal HPLC where the flow rate is very high. We have to run in the nano LC in a nanoliter flow rate. Okay. Now come to the schematic diagram of Orbitra Fusion. So Orbitra Fusion as I told it is a hybrid instrument. It has quadruple, it has ion trap and it has orbit trap. Okay. So ions are inserted from here. It gets filtered in the quadruple first. Then it goes to, it comes to the ion routing multiple where the ion will store and it will tells you where to go because you have two detectors, ion trap and the orbit trap. So from here either it will go to the ion trap or it will go to the orbit trap. So then orbit trap, it's orbit trap basically is a high resolution. It gives you 500K maximum uh, resolution. And lastly, the ion trap, which is basically a dual cell ion trap. You can store your ion and you can uh, do the detection of our ions. And also you have a ETD option. So in the next slide, it will be clear for you. Uh, we have a uh, video how it works. Now we are doing first the full MS, MS1. Okay, so now ions will generate here. It will passes through uh, ion transfer capillary, inserting through that. So after that, here what happened? Ions trying to spread out because all the ions are very highly charged. So it tries to spreading. So you need a focusing. So it will focus. Then it's called the bent flutter pole, bending where the neutrals are removed. Because uh, in when the uh, ions are inserting to the instrument, there are some neutrals also. So you can, with the high voltage, uh, voltage difference, the, the charge molecule can bend, but the neutrals cannot bend. 
So after that, in the quadruple, you can select the ions, which one you want. Then it first comes to this ion routing multiple, where it will first store here. So here is the first stoppage where it will be decided either it will go to the orbit trap or it will go to the ion trap. Okay. So now uh, it will come to the orbit trap MS and then it's been detected in the orbit trap. Okay. So now it's a full scan. What happened in the MSMS? So in case of MSMS only one molecule has been filtered from this mass. Only one molecule filtered and that gets fragmented and then, then it will be detected, MS2. So same thing happened, ions are going. So inside a quadruple, the only one molecule will be there. So other will be filtered out. Now that molecule go to this ion routing multiple and get fragmented. So here it will fragmented in the ACD mode. It's nothing but the collision induction with high energy. So here, uh, after fragmenting here, it goes to the ion trap, where it is stored first and then trapped here and then it get detected. Okay, so it's detected here with the sur large surface area detector. So it's a very parallel rea uh, reaction, basically parallelly it is going on. So when the first MS is going on here, MS1, at the same time the MS MS is going on simultaneously. So it's a parallelly both the detector is working. Okay, so from one MS can, it can do 20 MS MS. It can select 20 peaks from one MS can and it can do the MS MS of 20. Okay, now come to the specification of fusion orbit trap. So first is the mass accuracy. Mass accuracy is tells that uh, is le less than 1 ppm and for internal calibration and with uh, less than 3 ppm with external calibration. So what does it mean by external and internal? So every instrument requires a calibration. So you have a standards, you inject the standard so you have the mass of the standards and against that mass is exact mass, you calibrate your instrument. So that is the simple external calibration. Now in case of internal calibration, we fix one of the masses as a sta internal standard. We fix that mass and do the again calibration. So that in that time, we'll get the internal calibration. So that's why when we do the internal calibration, the calibration will be less, less than one ppm. Now the mass range, so you can acquire the mass range from 50 to 6000 m by z, not the mass, okay, so m by z. So bigger the molecule, the more the charge state and it will come inside the this range. But you cannot scan the whole total mass range 50 to 6000 in one shot. So you can scan the first mass and the highest is the 15x of the first mass. So for example, if you start from 100 uh, m by z, you can scan up to 1500 m by z. So if you want to scan the full mass range, then you want to divide the scan range. So start from 100 to 5, 1500, and 1500 to 6000. Then resolution, you can get the maximum resolution of 500k at 200 m by z. Scan speed, 18 hertz per minute. So fragmentation, so you have different, three different kind of fragmentation, CID, ACD, and ETD. And there is a basically a mixture, combination of any two, ETD, ACD, and ETD, CID. So C, in case of CID, what it's basically collision induced dissolution. So what happened in that collision induced dissolution? You collide your, uh, you, you inject some uh, neutral gases that will collide with your sample molecule and get fragmented. That is CID. ACD is high energy collision induced dissolution. So this is nothing but CID with higher energy. We are putting higher energy to get better fragmentation. And ETD is a electron transfer dissociation. What happened there? You put a reagent molecule which ejects an anion. That anion will collide with the sample molecule and get fragmented. That is called the ETD. 
So according to your sample uh, objective, what do you want to do? According to you have to select the fragmentation mode. Then, uh, then polarity switching means it's not required for the proteins. But in case of small molecules, if you don't know in which mode, either it's a positive mode or a negative mode, it will ionize. So you can do the both scan, positive scan and the negative scan within a one second. So you can run that one way. MSN as it is a ion trap, so you can do 10 MSN means MS, MS, MS2, MS3, MS4 up to 10 theoretically. Isolation in quad double you can go minimum 0.4 AMU means plus minus 0.2 Daltons. So the, what that means means if you want to identify if you want to identify one uh, molecular M by Z of 100, so you can scan between 99.8 to 100.2. So that narrow window you can scan. Okay, so. <clears throat> Now comes uh, see some experiments where means how the instrument works in different workflows because we cannot show you uh, in the instrument part. So we have some animation where we can see how the uh, instrument do the MS and MSMS. So first experiment tells that MS in OT orbitrap and MSMS doing the through the CID it will do in the ion trap. So CID will be happened here. So what happened first, the ions will be detected here, MS. From that MS can one molecule one at a time, it will be filtered here and fragmented here. Okay, so let's say, so the first full MS will go. So the first mass, it will, first it will stop here, then it will comes to orbit trap. When the full MS is going on, we are doing the parallel. So the second, uh, first parent ion has been selected here. Okay, and it will be stopped there first. Then it will go for the fragmentation in the HPC cell. When it is going fragmenting, the second ion is waiting here. So you are not losing any molecule as well as the time. Okay, so it's a parallel reaction. So when all the all the MSMS scan is MS2 scan is over, then only you'll uh, you will get the MS scan. So at the end of the full scan, you will get MS scan as well as MSMS scan. So you are not losing any time as well as any uh, molecules, samples. So like uh, second experiment is uh, ACD. On the first experiment we are doing in the CID. What happened? In that case, the fragmentation happens here. Now in case of CI ACD, the fragmentation will happen here. Okay. So now, <coughs> same way, the full MS, it will stop here then it will go to orbitrap for analyzing. Now the first mass will uh, comes here and get fragmented. When it will be f sending to the ion trap, at the same time, the second mass will come up. So you are not the same way. You are doing the parallel reactions. So after all the MS scan, MS2 scan, you will get the MSMS MS scan. Now next is the ETD, what happens in case of ETD. So even the ETD fragmentation will happen in the ion trap also. So first is the full MS in same way, the full MS comes to orbit trap. Now the first ion has been isolated in the quadruple and first stop here, then it will inject it to the ion trap. Now I told you in ETD you require a reagent which gives you the anion. So that reagent will comes from here. So it will inject a reagent, its reagent calls the fluorenthine. So that is a carcinogenic. So it will, it will gives you some anion. It will make the anions and get fragmented that molecules. So once the fragmentation is happened, so it will give you the MS2 data as well as MSMS MS data. So ETD is a very specialized case only when you are going for the PTM type analysis. So post transfer motivation like phosphorylation or acetylation or glycosylation. In those cases, you have to use this uh, ETD reaction. So uh, in the instrument, the better part is that you already, uh, there are already the templates for all type of analysis. So you don't have to start from the scratch. 
So uh, you just click on the which method you want to use, either it's identification or it's a quantification or is a PTM work. So you have to select that method and run the method. Okay, so there are already uh, templates are made. Now before going to the next step, so LC is another big part because in the front end we are putting a LC. Why we require a LC for this kind of analysis? Because uh, the peptide length may be from 300 to 2000 m by z. So with the mass, we cannot separate all the m by z's. We can separate the nearby masses by the resolution, but we cannot separate the in the range. So we need to separate those peptides. So that we put a LC in the front line where either with the basis of hydrophobicity or any other parameters, we separate those peptides and elute one by one and inject it to the mass spec. Okay, so these are the different parameters we are using for setting up the LC run. Here the important part is the gradient. So you have to choose a proper gradient. So that gradient should be on the, uh, on the complexity of a sample. So now here I am showing you 30 minutes gradient. So it's work for a simple one protein like BSA or single protein. But when your complexity, when you are working with the wholesale lysate, that time you have to increase the gradient for two hours, three hours, four hours. Okay. So right that, like that you have to work on the gradient part, not in the MS part. Okay. So now come for the some data analysis part. <coughs> For data analysis, uh, we have Protein Discoverer 2.2. That is a comp uh, comprehensive and extensible software for qualitative and quantitative. So you can identify as well as qual quantify the proteins. Here, the quantification is a relative quantification, not an absolute quantification. Okay, so So what, what it has, basically it will have some different search engines like Sequest, Mascot, uh, Bionic, Amanda. Out of this Sequest is a free available, so it will comes with the integrated with the protein discoverer. Other, other search engines, Mascot or Bionic, those has to be purchased with the license. So actually what, what this search engines works, I means how it works. So when you have run a sample, human sample, you get the data. MSMS data. So now you tell the software search engine ke you extract the protein, you set the database of human. So the search engine will digest, theoretically digest those protein from the human and make a theoretical mass list. And then the theoretical mass list will be compared with the experimental mass list. At the MS level, MS level first, MS1 level, when it will match, match with the MS level, then it will come for the MS2 level. If it is matched in the MS2 level and go get, get those B and Y ions to get the sequence, then it will tell you, okay, that peptide is present. Then it will gi give you, okay, this protein peptide is present means this protein also be present there, okay. So it will measure, determine relative quantification. So you can do relative quantification. Either it's a label free or a rebel reaction like TMT, SILAC, ITRAC. So here uh, is a uh, window where you will see the first of is a wholesale lysate run for 120 minutes. We run a DDMS2 method. We do OT at MS and ACD also in orbit trap. Okay, MS2 also detected in orbit trap. We are not using ion trap here. It's a 120 minute, uh, 180 minutes run. It's a wholesale lysate. So first window, it tells the TIC, total ion chromatogram. So like in uh, HPLC, you are getting UV chromatogram. Here we'll get on the basis of total ions, it will make a chromatogram. So that's why it's called the total ion chromatogram. Second window is called the BPC, base peak chromatogram, on the basis of highest intense speed for the each retention time. Okay, so that is called the base peak chromatogram. Now, if you click anywhere, you will get like this of MS spectra. This is the real MS spectra where X axis is the M by Z, uh, Y axis is the relative abundance, and it will see different charge states are there, plus two, plus three, plus four. Because of ESI, you will get the different charge states. Okay, now when we search this data in PD, with different uh, with this two workflow so in pd you have two workflows one is the processing workflow where we search the data against the database and we using the sequest and after getting the peptides those peptides may be the false positive or false negative so you have to validate those peptides so those has been done in the consensus step where we do the peptide validation as well as protein validations 
and we'll ultimately get the <coughs> data. So here, the string uh, we are doing the validation at 1% FDI. So one, what does that mean? If you run the sample 99 times, the protein will identify it. Maybe in one time, it not been identified. So in such stringency, we are detecting those, validating those peptide, and we are telling, OK, this peptide is present. So then the report is very, very good for publishing. So now, what after search the data, what is the report format? So it comes like this. So these are giving you the protein information, uh, what are the protein match, and the sequence coverage, how many peptides has been matched. So here, important thing is the unique peptides. So unique, we are looking for the unique peptides. How many unique peptides we have uh, identified? So what does it mean by unique peptide? Unique peptide is those peptides which are present only in those proteins, not any other protein in the, included in the database. So we, wh what database you are using? In that database, that peptide is not present in any other protein. So we are looking for at least two or more unique peptides. Those kind of data, rip data will be the very good data, OK? So here we have identified almost 2,255 protein groups. So it comes like uh, from that data set, it has extracted this many MSMS spectra, which is when we match against the uh, database, we are getting this many 23,000 PSMs. And out of these PSMs, we are getting this many 2255 protein groups. So uh, right now, I'm talking about the identification just, how to do. So fusion is not for identification. It can do many works. So right now we are doing the deep uh, large analysis and the label free or label reaction to relative quantification. So it can do the phosphoproteomics, it can do the uh, lipidomics, it can do the metabolomics. So you can use this instrument for different kind of analysis. Lastly, this is a website planetorbitrap.com where you will get all type of information of Orbitrap in uh, regarding application wise if you are working on proteomics, so you will get all type of application uh, notes, uh, published data, or uh, methods. So you can register here, and you will get the free updates. OK? last two lectures, you are now familiar that if you have a protein of interest which you want to dig deeper, you want to further characterize that protein and want to understand the possible role of that protein, an easy way of moving forward could be to do immunoprecipitation experiment followed by protein identification using mass spectrometry. In today's lecture, you have seen how to take the complex which you have eluded out from the IP experiment and identify the potential interactors using mass spectrometry. There could be many softwares which could identify the potential proteins of interest. In fact, I would recommend you to use one of the open access software mascot to do the data analysis where you can easily identify the proteins of interest. There are many good softwares available even commercially one which we have shown today is Proteome Discoverer. In general, I hope these two lectures have given you some basics and understanding about how to study the biomolecular interactions using immunoprecipitation followed by mass spectrometry based experiment. Thank you.